Okay, good morning everyone in the five continents. Uh, today is the 2nd of uh, October, 2022. And this morning we have five incredible, wonderful professionals from Guatemala. They are Celeste, Jocelyn, Mercilinda, Mario, and Jerena. As usual, let me share my screen so we can see what we are going to do today and the rest of the year. Just a minute, please. Okay, wait. Okay, here we are. Uh, this is the presentation today. It takes some seconds, as I said before. <laughs> okay, let me, it frozen. Okay, it's coming. Okay, today we have the 84th International English Online Meeting. October the, the, is not the second, okay? Uh, the second of uh, October, 2022. Okay, as usual, let's take a moment to reflect. Jocelyn, if you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. What do you think about this quote? This says a lot about uh, our profession, right? Um, I think that as Maria was saying early in this meeting, we can stop learning. We are always learning. And um, I think that from the bottom of our hearts, we have to be open to everything that comes from the world. Yes, that's true. Thank you so much. And Jerena, anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Our good friend, Albert Einstein. What do you think, Jerena? It's, um, it's something very uh, special, let's say, because sometimes we are afraid to try new things. And because of that, uh, like today, like today, for example. <laughs> okay, uh, in that case, uh, is that uh, I'm afraid to say, talking about the language, uh, I'm afraid to to be in front of many people, and, and I'm afraid to say what I'm thinking, or first I need to translate the, the language or the, the words that I want to say. But if we don't um, be brave enough to to take to test ourselves we're not going to discover how powerful we can be yes that's true okay let me let me let me show you who is presenting soon uh on october the 9th next sunday we will have four wonderful professionals from mexico then on october the 16th uh debra suarez from the tisol usa on october 23rd lorena ojeda from argentina on October the 30th, at the end of this month, we'll have five professionals from Argentina. Then the wonderful Monica Rodriguez on November the 6th. And finally, at the end of the year, we'll have this, this meeting with six uh, professionals and presidents of English teachers associations here in Latin America. Okay, you can watch more than 85 international meetings in our YouTube channel. Okay, and who is presenting today? Celeste Lemus, Jocelyn Natalie, Mercilinda Ortiz, Mario Villagran, and Jerena Abigail. So uh, I want to thank you all of you, and I would like you to introduce yourself. Tell, tell us something briefly about where you work and what you do. You will start, Mario, please tell us where you work and how long you have been a teacher. Sorry, I just wanted to unmute my microphone. Thank you, uh, Jaime, for uh, having us um, and being making us part of this, uh, this round table in Peru at the University of Piura. Um, in my case, um, I um, hold a, a degree, uh, which we call in Spanish licenciatura in uh, Letras y Filosofía. Um, at the moment, 
uh, working on a master's for um, higher education. Um, Excellent. With um, the emphasis on, on technology. Okay. And um, design thinking. <laughs> and okay. um, I work uh, at Mariano Galvez. Um, the reason why we're here, but also I share my time with uh, Universidad Rafael Landívar. Thank you so much. Jerena, briefly, where you work and what you do, please. Okay, uh, during the week, I work at Escuela Politécnica. I am the English coordinator there. And also I have the chance to participate in the School of Language of Mariano Galvez University. And I am a tutor in CITE, let's say here in Guatemala, is the Centro de Innovación Tecnológica de Educación here at Mariano Galvez. Thank you so much. Jocelyn? Hi, everyone. I have been a teacher for 15 years now. Uh, currently, I am working at Liceo Javier in, in Guatemala. And I am also a professor at Mariano Galvez University. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Celeste? Also, as Jocelyn, I've been a teacher for 15 years already. And currently, I'm working at the College of Interamericano as a technology professor at university, um, both universities, Mariano Grandes and Eastwood Universities, um, and as a professor, as I said, of the humanistic careers. Okay, also, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry that I interrupted you. I don't know if Mercy Linda is around. Yes, she is. Hello, Mercy Linda. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Jaime, for having us today. Um, well, um, I'm Mercy Linda de Herrera, and I work as an English teacher for, I've been teaching English almost all my life, <laughs> but um, I work at the Universidad Mariano Galvez de Guatemala. I am the director of the language school. And also I teach ESP in the hotel and catering and tourism students at the university. And I work uh, as a TCA and a proctor uh, for ETS. Okay, thank you so much, Celeste, Merci Linda, Jocelyn, Mario, and Jerena for giving us part of your time on a Sunday morning. We could be sleeping, having time with our families, but thank you so much for giving us part of your time and the expertise you are going to share with all of us. To start the round table, uh, let, let, let us see the first question. And the first question is, how would you describe the reality of the teaching learning process in Guatemala at schools and universities? So I don't know who wants to start. Maybe you, Celeste? Yes, of course, thank you so much. Um, well, um, I will think of really different, we have two different worlds here and our reality in Guatemala. The reality is that we have these worlds, the private sector and the public sector, right? So if I talk to you about each one, you will say, wow, it's a big difference. And I will say, yeah, this is why I'm mentioning it as two different worlds. Oh, well, um, then uh, these two are the public and the private sectors, as I said. And what happens here is that private sectors offer really good English curriculums. If you go and see how their curriculum is, is created and um, also organized, you will say, wow, they have very really high um, expectations from their students. And this is why uh, their English has been uh, built since uh, pre preschool, in which is little kids right learning English since the very beginning of their of their school right, and um, then they have really high levels, making students perhaps B one, B two in secondary, and when once they graduate, even C one or C C two students thinking of of the common European framework levels. Yes, and, and this is a reality for private sectors. Depends on um, what level schools um, do want to, to achieve. And then thinking of public sectors, if you revise the CMP, you will notice that it's very basic, perhaps a one, a two. And this is um, what happens, right? Like it's not exactly how English should be taught because you should think of a better 
a better um, curriculum for for public sectors as well. But um, yeah, that will be as you ask for the reality. That will be the case of, of some groups who are more privileged than others, right? Thinking of those groups. Okay, what about you, Mercilinda? Something to say about what the reality in Guatemala is now about the teaching and learning process? Okay, thank you. Well, um, since the pandemic, our reality has um, suffered. Uh, I will say we we are going back. We we went back in education, not only in English or in other subjects, uh, many subjects that uh, the we have. Uh, many offers in universities and in private institutions and in public institutions, but uh, the reality here is that the, the, the level of English has, is, is decreasing. I mean, students are graduating from high school and attending the university without uh, having learned the, the necessary skills to become professionals uh, in, a, in the future, or they don't know how to use the language because they only have, they just learned uh, how to communicate by like a video games or even uh, games in English, but it's not uh, the skill that they need to enter the university. So for me, uh, the problem right now, or, or, or the situation here is that the level of English has decreased and the process it's is in a crisis. It's in a crisis because uh, people don't uh, appreciate the work that teachers do. Okay, thank you so much. Something else to add, dear Jocelyn, Natalie, about this first question. Yes, thank you, Jaime. As my coworkers were sharing, um, I think that the pandemic has been rough in this language teaching. Um, we are trying to do our best. We um, always like care about uh, students learning a new language because uh, it is the future, right? They need it for their profession. But uh, although in private schools, we have a great qual uh, like we have different skills that we are developing in students. So, uh, but in, in like in Public schools, we don't have that. So... Go on, Jocelyn. Did, did you finish, Jocelyn? Um, no, I was just like waiting for. <laughs> sorry, for sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is what uh, what I have to to share, right? The the reality that we are facing right now is kind of hard, but uh, uh, teaching English in Guatemala can be good in in private schools. Okay, as usually happens in, all all over Latin America. Mario, something else to add? Sure. Um, well, I stood on the principle that teaching is a, a many-sided uh, profession. Um, I think my, my colleagues have already expressed it, so I just want to add also that uh, my belief is that a profound educational uh, reform must take place uh, regarding um, what has to do with the learning process and the career teaching in, in Guatemala. Uh, that's because the state of things as they are for public or private uh, laboratory schools, institutes, that at the end, they run under the common umbrella of the Ministry of Education. Um, however, the autonomy of each resources, climate and performance at the end differ from the point that teaching is better explained on the large scope as a trade and not as a profession. And young learners are consumers of facts with general cognitive frameworks, lessons, and overall um, non-standardized tests. So that's the reality colleges and universities. So basically professors 
dwell around and if possible take onwards from that paradigm of um, learning yeah thank you so much and finally jerena abigail referring concerning the first question how would you describe the situation of the teaching and learning process in your country thank you uh as they were saying uh we are living a crisis and we are going to continue living uh with that at least for three or four years um and and it is because for example now when you're teaching and the teacher is is really uh prepare they, he has invest a lot of time creating uh let's say um resources for the students putting to practice the language and etc but when you realize when you're teaching and you realize that students uh they don't have their cameras on and they are not paying attention when you say hey for example hey, Jaime where are you and no one is answering in the other part of the <laughs> on the on the screen or the camera and what are they doing they are not paying attention and now if we are having a lot of tests they are not going to pass them and when they go to the university and they have to pass those uh test it's going to be the same result and also also as licenciada celeste was saying uh we have two different words here we have the private schools who, who which of course are going to present a better or advanced english and also the public schools that they are not going now they are not having the opportunity to to face the teacher which uh or for example they are just having some list of words so it's difficult for us yeah okay thank you so much before going on uh, we want to thank the people who are present here in the zoom meeting and also people who are following us in facebook live like maruf uh, Mrida, janathan ragopal sandar alicia lucio romero abkar ali filmor murillo in filipinas Emmanuel Alberto in Peru, Milaura Alfaro Quesada in Costa Rica, Carlos Camacho, Joy Wolf in Colombia, and Ramos Tolentino in Mexico. Thank you so much for being here. And let's go to the second question, okay? And the second question is, what are the principal challenges of the teachers to become professionals in Guatemala? So what would you say, my dear friends and colleagues, are the principal challenges that uh, professors in Guatemala have? I don't know who wants to start this time for the second question. Is there any volunteer? Okay, I'll, I'll answer, okay? Thank you, thank you okay. so much. Well, um, there are many challenges, you know, like uh, the first, as a, I'm sorry, as an institution, the first challenge that we have is to how to find those students that actually have the passion for teaching, you know, that uh, I remember many years ago that we have a, a line of people uh, trying to enter our EFL programs that we have like sections of 30 or 40 students that want to become English teachers. but. Um, and I mean, for let's say, since all of these uh, teaching uh, online programs appear, there we have less and less people interest in becoming teachers of English, and that will be a challenge for the universities. How to to uh, get the attention of uh, those uh, young people that uh, have the skills, like to teach, but they don't want to go and study well so in the end uh the students that learn and and are enrolled at the university the first challenge they have is they have to find a suitable university for them a suitable program and and here we're talking about schedule we're talking about tuition and we're talking about that distance because now they're looking for institutions that work online only but they want to learn online to teach face-to-face -face or 
the other way. They want to be there face to face and they want to become online teachers or tutors or virtual teachers. And of course, uh, a big challenge they have is that uh, they're here in Guatemala, especially in private universities, we don't have scholarships. I mean, people, if they want to have a good uh, um, education or they want to become a professionals, they have to pay a private university, a private program, even in the binational. But the thing is that they don't have the money. They cannot afford a, a private program. So also, I think that um, even the ones that finish the career that a close pensum, they face two uh, big bigger pro problems. And the proficiency, the level of proficiency at the end of the career is something that has become um, something uh, really problematic for us, even for us as, as professors, because we, we think that having them for three years at the university, uh, preparing to become English teachers, um, we think that we are doing things well, and in the end, I've seen students that they go and take the TOEFL test and they don't get a minimum that is required here, like it's 80 points. And, and we go like, okay, what is going on? So in, during the pandemic, we decided to, to lower that uh, requirement in order to help people to graduate, the ones that were left behind because they haven't uh, achieved the, the 85 points. And we start giving them the uh, uh, Oxford, placement test or OTE test. And we have decided, we, we have uh, discovered or somehow that the same people that enter with uh, intermediate level of English at the, at the beginning of their careers somehow ended in the same level. And that is frustrating for us professors because we know that we have been given them enough exercises and we have given them uh, enough uh, practice of the language and, and, and tools to, to learn uh, the language. So for me, uh, the main, um, the main uh, um, challenge. challenge to become professionals as, as English teachers in Guatemala or any other country is the level of proficiency. You cannot teach or you cannot give what you don't have. So they cannot be good teachers if they don't have the appropriate level of English. Okay, thank you so much for the info. And let me tell you that in Peru, uh, uh, it to, be, uh, to become an English teacher has become good because we need lots of new teachers. So the problem, as you mentioned, is money, money to study scholarships, to, to get to study to, to the good universities. Anybody else, Celeste, Jocelyn, Mario, or Jerena, who wants to add something about this second question? Yes, I will add, for example, um, how things change, the panorama change for teachers uh, from before the pandemic and what happened during the pandemic. It's because we were like thrown to water, as Thomas Perez says, uh, for the usage of technology. And this was something that, that not everybody was able to manage correctly yet by the time it happened. So then uh, the, con the consuming hours were amazing. It was like whole day sitting in front of the screen and the teachers who hadn't any um, opportunities to, to have this professional development ahead of time, they were facing the situation. And then uh, some also the, the salaries were, were, were down. And then um, they were having more working hours, but less payment. And it was really a big problem that made many teachers decide not to continue their careers as teachers or their professions, because it was very, very um, difficult. But it was uh, um, a few teachers that uh, had the opportunity to, to show off what they already knew. And it was amazing because these teachers were like coaches of others, trying to support other teachers that, that had these problems. Uh, I myself had the opportunity to, to coach other teachers in, in, where, in places where I work and, and supporting each other. It was a beautiful like, value that we see 
um, was amazing because um, we teachers uh, supported each other when, when we needed. And we, uh, the ones who, who are still here and, and enjoy our passion, which is teaching, are um, really incredibly going on and, and, and having this uh, experience in the past will make us feel happy and proud in the future when we talk about this as a past situation that, um, yeah, we made it through this. And here we are following up our dream that it is being our teachers. Yes, I agree with you, dear Celestia. And I guess the key words are passion and happiness. Yeah, we have we need to be passionate. It doesn't matter how much we are going to make or the things we have to do, et cetera, et cetera. Something else, dear Jocelyn, Mario, or Jerena to add to for, for this question. I just want to say, Jaime, that uh, as you were sharing, we need a lot of teachers here in Guatemala too. As uh, this is as Celeste was saying, the problem is that um, a lot of teachers are leaving like, the schools because they need more money or they are like aware of the situation that they are facing with uh, the economic stability that we have. So yeah. what they what they need is just like another job, you know, so they go to call centers because they pay more or because they have different schedules. So that's why they have been like giving up, like starting oh. at the uni university or they are a uh, passion or profession because uh, it is better for them to earn more money than uh, being in a school uh, like with low payments and having to face the, the reality that we as teachers are facing right now. Well, that, that is a real problem, right, Jocelyn? Anything else to add, Jose, uh, sorry, Mario or Jerena? Yes. Uh, of course, they have mentioned a lot of important facts about these uh, challenges that the teacher can face. But also, for example, when we have passion, as Jocelyn has just said also, um, sometimes they have to they, they have to study or they go to the university because they need to get uh the the degree let's say and because it is a requirement of the minister of um of education and when they are doing that kind of things um sometimes they say that they don't have enough money to pay the university and because they are going to earn more money as they were saying in consenters and they don't have to, to come back at home and they don't have to plan a lot of things. They don't have to, to grade some uh, homework or they don't have to prepare classes for next day. So they realize that it's sometimes it is, it's better to go home and prepare and get ready for the, the next day or et cetera. And it's, um, that's a challenge. But if uh, uh, also the low, because of the low wages, uh, it is not to pay the, the, the university. So sometimes they have to change their careers because of this. Yeah, and mm -hmm. finally, dear Mario, something else uh, to add to, the, to everything you, uh, your friends have said? Thank you. Um, I think my colleagues basically have expressed uh, um, with great detail uh, what happens uh, with um, uh, becoming a teacher as a profession. The only thing I would just include, because that made me reflect upon, um, let's say the, the etymology of the word profession, mm -hmm. because um, at the end, uh, it's, a, it's a declaration, right? It's a public declaration, uh, profiteri, you know, profissionem. And uh, if we think about it backwards, uh, it's also a bow of what you do. And um, since teaching, as I said in my, in my previous uh, um, answer, answer, it's also a, a many-sided profession. Well, just to give you a, an example, um, if you are to prepare an online lesson, uh, it's not about just what you know and as, what, as, as our uh, director said, it's, you cannot give what you don't have. But also, uh, you have to, in this case, be, be a web developer, or for example, you have to be a software developer, or you have to be your own information technology manager. That's you have true. to also know about design thinking, 
And who wants the job where you have to have so many hats? And if we go back to the, the salary or how are you uh, it's nine hours. well paid, you know, uh, how, how you receive a, a, um, something for what you do, then that's uh, one of uh, the key issues of uh, being in this profession, apart from just being passionate, being a, a permanent apprentice and uh, saying that out loud to society. Yeah, I agree with you all, and especially with you, dear Mario. Some people in Facebook Live, like Joe, Joe Jose Lobo from Colombia, he says, yes, passion, happiness, and discipline. People should not pro procrastinate. Ramos Tolentino in Mexico, he says, you are all sharing very important information. I think we are, we are, we are, we all are facing the same teaching problems working online. And Carlos Camacho says it's really interesting to know how is English around our country. Okay, we want to thank people who are present here in the audience today, and I don't know if one of them has a question or something to say about the first two questions, something brief. Cristal, Juan Carlos, Tenelema, Denis, David Castellanos, Filmor Murillo, Consuelo, or Marta Elizabeth, something else to say? Or we go on with the question number three. Ah, okay. Uh, one one a six four seven says hello to everyone. Uh, it ah Ulysses, hello Ulysses from Colombia, but now in the USA. Thank you for being here. Okay, I guess there is no comments. There are no comments. No. Okay, let's go to the next question, and the next question number three is a, a very important one. Where can you become a licenciado in lengua inglesa in Guatemala? I don't know if one of you can give us an overall view of where you can get a licenciado in lengua inglesa in, in, in Guatemala. Um, there are many private uh, institutions, like a couple, uh, not many, but a couple of private institutions. Mariano Galvez is one. I think that all of us are graduated from Mariano Galvez, so uh, we can talk about it. But uh, talking about uh, na the National University, uh, I think they started with the program, but they are not done with the curriculum or the, the I, I don't know if they are having enough people too because you know, studying English in the national university is kind of difficult. People think that they go to university to learn English. And that's when they face their reality that they need to know English in order to get a degree. So it is kind of, of difficult to obtain a, a degree in the national university because people are not, uh, they don't, they don't have the level that they should have in order to obtain a licenciatura in English in here. Three, three questions, dear Jocelyn. Number one, uh, talking about dollars, how much do you have to pay to study, for example, at, uni, at your university? Is it a private university? Yes, Mariano Galvez is a private university. So how much, thinking about dollars, uh, do you have to pay? About a hundred. About a hundred dollars a month. A month. Okay, that that's that's uh, affordable in Peru. A hundred dollars. Yeah, it's it's okay. Next question: How many? How long do you have to study to be to become a licenciado? Around five years, right? Okay. And, yeah. and do you have to get an international certificate, FCE, CAE, or TOEFL? Yes, you have um, requirements at the very end of the career for the specific English career, that it is um, having a proficiency test. It depends. It has been varying for a few years at the time, whereas a TOEFL test later on it became uh, uh, just in general a proficiency test. But it is a, a requirement that it's obvious. So, so, so what level do you? What level the students have to 
to obtain. Should have an advanced level. Should have an advanced level. Like C1. Like C1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. as a, as a BAs, because in the professoral, I mean, the first three years of the career that we have, because you were talking, you were asking us about the licenciatura yes. and a BA. So we have the professoral, which is, is the, the technician as an English teacher, like a T, TFL or TESO. And then they have to do two more years to get the specialization in teaching English. Oh, that's, so that's interesting. What we have. That that's five, interesting. It's five that's years. It. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, we have private universities and, and pool, uh, national university, San Carlos University. And as um, Jocelyn and Celeste were saying, the problem there is the students uh, get the, their teaching diplomas without speaking English. And uh, because they only have a general knowledge of English exam because it's a public university, but in the private universities, you have to pass the proficiency levels or an international uh, proficiency or exam that uh, determines your level of English. I, so I have a, here in Guatemala, yes. So sorry, sorry that I interrupted. Uh, I have a question. Uh, in your university, do students need to prove that they know some English before starting? To, before starting to study? Yes. Part of the admission, part of the admission exam at the university is that we give them a, a placement test and uh, we don't accept students that have, uh, they don't have an intermediate of at least a, a low intermediate level of English. Uh, and we that don't doesn't... Accept and we don't accept does. beginners. I mean, if a beginner or a person that is an A1 or A2 uh, wants to become an English teacher, we ask them to study just English for at least one year in our English programs. Okay, it's because we have English programs for the all the careers and we told them. And that's what I was telling you that it's kind of frustrating because even yeah. though that we're giving them lots of opportunities to, to higher the level. We have, uh, during the pandemic, we have faced students that actually started studying in, the, in 2020 when this pandemic situation started and they are supposed to be graduating right now. And I was amazed when I give them the proficiency test and we discovered that they have the same level they had in 2020 when they started the university. So yeah. this is something that really worries us. And not only Mariano Galvez University, we have Universidad del Valle de Guatemala. We have uh, Universidad del Istmo de Guatemala. We have um, other universities that have other programs and that their level of English is not, they don't ask for that higher level, but we say that if they are going to be English teachers, they have to know the language, okay? Of so, course. And, and that is, um, as I say, we have the national program at the national university, and we also have the uh, private programs in, in different. But as a bachelor's degree, the only one, the only ones that offer a bachelor's degree in, or a licenciatura in teaching English are Universidad Mariano Galvez, Universidad del Valle de Guatemala, y, and Universidad del Istmo. Now, other universities only offer the, the diploma in teaching. They are not licenciados, they are not BAs. Okay? And they have to study three years, I guess that's what you said? Yes, only three years. And they don't have to speak English. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, when when I uh, interview people that come to me and ask me if they want to work in my uh, school of languages, and I go and I go like, where did you graduate? And I discover that they graduated from these universities, but the level of English is terrible. I mean, yeah. So we don't know okay. what happened. They graduate okay. because they do some kind of a research paper, research paper, and uh, that's it. You know, mm -hmm. like a mm, thesis or monographia. We have the thesis, we have the monographia, but besides that, the language English is a requirement. 
not mm -hmm. only to finish, to present the thesis or present the monographia, but they have to pass, they have to prove that they have achieved at least a B2 on a C1 level. Yeah, Because anything else, uh, Celeste, Jocelyn, Mercelinda, Mario, Jerena, you want to add about this, the third question, about the requirements? I don't know, is it, is it um, a, a profitable uh, career for, for people in, in Guatemala to study and become a, a licenciado in lengua inglesa? Is it, is it attractive for people? Yeah, that's why our English teachers, yeah, as we have these first two years for, for, for our students to become English teachers, feel attracted to follow up their career as we give them this um, talk and this preview of what happens when they turn into uh, bachelors in, in technology and education. So they feel attracted about it. And yeah, if you see some um, um, places that are offering jobs here, uh, thinking of schools, Yeah, they, it's a requirement to be a uh, bachelor. So they are actually willing to go. Times the challenges that we were talking about before is what really makes them decide not to continue. But uh, yeah, they feel attracted as we did when we started our career. And it's profitable, yeah. When you find your path and your way and you enjoy it, it's um, a really good. Um, uh, Profession that you can follow. I, I'm really happy with my profession. Yeah, and, and that's the key word, as we said before, and through all the round tables. Uh, we, if we are passionate, we don't think about salary, number of hours, exams to correct, visas to do. We just love what we do. Like Ramos Tolentino, for example, in Mexico, in Facebook Live, he says, in Mexico, it takes five years to become an English teacher. There are both private and public institutions and students should be in advanced level. Obviously, private schools are really expensive. Okay, anything else before we go on to the question number four? Yes, I would like to, to add something. Please, please Jerena, yes. go on. Thank you. In the place where I work, let me tell you that they don't hire English teachers if they don't have the degree of Mariano Galvez University because they said that it is a, a very complete career and also uh, the way they manage technology. Yeah, technology, I've noticed that is very important, right? In your, in your, um, in your universities. Yes, actually the, they have the specialization in teaching English with uh, technology. So they say that the, their uh, diplomas and paper is written licenciado en enseñanza del inglés con especialización en tecnología educativa that's what it says so they are giving the specialization in in their diplomas they when they yes. graduate and, and that's true and, and mario mentioned that before we we not only need to speak the language or do this but we need to be psychologists we need to be tutors we need to be sometimes fathers or mothers And, and many other things, right? Yeah, and the idea of the, the degree in Mariano Galvez University is that they, they not only teach, but they, we try to encourage them to, to make their own uh, teaching materials. We have uh, graduate students that are working for different editorials, making English books, I mean, course books or reviewing or they are work as editors so they graduated as a English teachers and then finished the licenciatura and now they are working as editors and uh, with this um, different editorials and I, I have a couple of uh, teachers that work for Santillana and they uh, review a uh, English books and we also I have the I have had the opportunity to help and reviewing in books that uh, other schools or uh, around uh, Latin America are using because uh, we review books that um, universities in Honduras are using and we we were behind scenes in, in the preparation of this uh, books so the licenciatura as Mario said is is um, It's, it, it, it makes them students not only think of, I am going to be teaching for the rest of my life, 
okay? So I can do something else with yeah. my knowledge, okay? Yeah, and talking about books, Mercy Linda, Celeste, Jocelyn, Mario and Jerena, last Sunday we had our friends from Colombia and I didn't know that they, they, they produce books uh, only for Colombian reality and they are given to the students for free. Does that happen in Guatemala to the government and the professionals of the, in the government ministry? Uh, they produce books for the reality of Guatemala or they okay. are imported? Well, as I said uh, at the beginning, because of the pandemic, we were like in a, in a standby. The Minister of Education had in the past, talking about like 20 years ago, there was a Senal text. Centro Nacional del Libro de Texto, and it disappeared. I mean, they closed the this uh, center, and it was a shame because it was a place that they make books and give them free for uh, students all over the country. So what happens now is that the government imports and they buy books. They still give books for free for in in public uh, institutions, but. As you as say, they are not um, appealing to national uh, reality, to Guatemalan mm -hmm. reality, okay? So for example, um, now people is about to celebrate Halloween, but here in Guatemala, uh, my generation didn't celebrate Halloween as, as it is now, because what we have was the, uh, the uh, previo Dia de Muertos or Dia de Difuntos, and what we have is like, um, we get together with the family to prepare a national dish called fiambre. So for oh. us, it was like a family tradition to get together, not to go out in the streets as for candy or these guys in some kind of monster or whatever. But in the books, they teach uh, traditions from other countries. Right. So one of the editorials that it's um, committed to work with the uh, traditions and, and things with, uh, as you say, they, the people ask is uh, this editorial that we have worked that they say, okay, we are going to do this in the context of Honduras. So we have to learn about Honduras <laughs> to help them do their books. And I am sure that they have uh, uh, um, ask people from other countries to do Guatemalan things. So I was like, why are we doing Honduras and we are not doing Guatemala, you know? I'm That's something that right? I asked them because we did Honduras and we learned some about the, about the food they, the, they eat and we, we learn about some traditions they have and, and say, why, don't, why are we doing Honduras and we are not doing Guatemala? But it, it is for private schools that ask. Even at uh, Mariano Galvez in the English programs, we have asked for a book that the book that we are using was uh, especially uh, made for Mariano Galvez University or okay. one editorial. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much, dear. Anything else to add, Celeste, Jocelyn, Mario, or Jerena? No? Okay, now we go to question number four. And the question number four is, what are the English teachers associations being in existence in Guatemala and how productive are they? So uh, you tell me, are, is there any English teachers association in Guatemala? May I start? Of course. Um, we came across to this uh, notion uh, a few days ago with uh, uh, the members that are here for the round table that due to the absence of an active national or private English teachers association with uh, the exception of independent virtual communities, um, publishers in Guatemala that provide books or mediated digital content and platforms in English basically have monopolized through uh, the commercial lens, the variety of methods and materials to be leaders in the development of books and tools that contribute to learning English language. So uh, it's, a, it's a sad note to say, but 
productivity uh, is here measured by product placement and sales. Yeah, okay. So uh, would you say that there is no, um, there is not any English teachers association in Guatemala? Well, actually, I'm sorry for interrupting. Actually, no, come on. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. We, uh, about, uh, let's say, six or seven years ago, uh, a group of uh, directors from uh, universities and the binational uh, get together and founded an association. So we have the Asociación de Maestros de Inglés de Guatemala, AMI. The thing is that it was something like we were so happy and we get together and we, we made the uh, paperwork and we got to the uh, government and we had the permissions to do the association. But in the end, there was no um, a real interest in people and becoming part of this, the association. Because uh, here we have another uh, like a figure that is the Colegio de Profesionales. So, in, in that is something like people go like, wow, that gives me status to become mm. a part of the Colegio de Profesionales. Yeah. Not just to become part of an association, you know? Of course, the idea of having the association, and one of the ideas of having the association for us was to, to be able to bring uh, TESOL Guatemala. Because yeah. we don't have TESOL Guatemala. I, I have to attend TESOL in other countries. I am part of a Mexican association of, uh, as, as you, like, you know, like uh, Anupi. Anupi, the place, where, yes. the place where I met you. Yes, and, I, and I, I did that because we don't have an association that is actually active and working as an association. But we discovered that the thing is like, people are more interested in becoming part of a colegio de profesionales that not as uh, associate, you know? And of course, uh, here in Guatemala, and people want to have uh, what we call cédula docente, which is like a ID number or yeah. that, yeah. that gives you uh, the chance to work not only in public, but in private uh, schools if you have your cédula docente, and that is extended by the Minister of Education. So people find, they say, well, I, the only thing I need to teach is to have my cédula docente. So I am going to go and get my cédula docente after I graduate from the uh, teacher of English. And, and if I continue the licenciatura, I will go to the Colegio de Profesionales. So it's not that we don't try. But we have uh, been discussing this question with the members of the round table. And we said, well, actually what we have a lot as like we have virtual communities and, and we were discussing to how many communities we actually, uh, we are active, you know, like always following them, trying to see what they are sharing, sharing it with others. So uh, even with you, uh, that you've made this uh, wonderful WhatsApp group of uh, researchers and speakers. And for me, it's like a, it's a community that I belong now, yes? Yes, and you know what? Many, many friends and colleagues and professionals all over Latin America are saying, why don't we create this online uh, international community? So that is a project, a plan for next year. And, and I think listening to you about the reality in Guatemala, why don't you five, Celeste, Jocelyn, Mercelinda, Mario, and Jerena, start thinking about creating the TESOL Guatemala? Why not? You are so, so knowledgeable, so intelligent, so smart, that I'm sure that you could do it. <laughs> yes. Okay, now let's go to the, to the last question. And the last question is uh, something else that you would like to say to pre-service teachers, to in-service teachers and, and, and future teachers. Something about 
for those people who are going to start teaching, for those people who are young, for those people who are in the process now, for example, me, I've been teaching like 37 years. I am 59 now, <laughs> believe it or not. And, and, and I love teaching. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't start uh, teaching because I love it. Be I, I started because this North American teacher, David Webb, I always remember him. I was his student in his speaking class and he said, Jaime, would you like to teach? And I said, yes, <laughs> because teaching for me was money. But then little by little, I found out, I learned that teaching was my passion. Why? Because meeting new people, interacting with new people, learning about history, culture, music, about many, many things that, 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 that now I love teaching. So I guess that for you, Mario, Jerena, Mercilinda, Cristal, and, 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 and Celeste, and everyone here in, in, in this world, we love teaching. That's why we are here, not because of the status, not because of the money, but because of what we love. I don't know about you. If you have a final message for the new generations of teachers, who wants to start? Yes, I would like to start. Thank you for Please, for Celeste. Yeah, um, I will recommend everyone who is interested in this world, and it's really passionate as well as we are, to think of the advantages mostly. What is it that we know? We have advantages now with uh, virtual education, how things are happening and, and, and these are uh, wonderful advantages that we can think of of the virtual education. So nowadays, if in the past was uh, something very uncommon in universities and few of the universities offer the virtual education. Now, many universities, are six, most of them uh, are offering already and it will be amazing if many of you that haven't been able to take that decision to make that decision now, it's the time to do it, right? And uh, thinking of many other things that are um, available for us as teachers, right? Like you already know how to manage the technology, which was, let's say, maybe a challenge in the past. We know, we, we have it, so it's a check. We will have a checklist right now of all the things that you can now already do and you are um, skillful with. And yeah, technology is not a challenge anymore. We know how yes. to do and uh, then also thinking of distance, perhaps so those were other challenges. Distance or costs for traveling, traffic and all those are not anymore a problem. I mean, and this is something amazing, right? So costs reduced in a way, right? So we can think of another advantage. And also um, thinking of other um, help that we can have, for example, in my class at the university, we were talking about the UNESCO. UNESCO is very aware of the situation of teachers. Yes, they offer a lot of articles that we have been analyzing in the past, and they gave us a lot of, uh, what, let's say, true tips and, and other things that they can bring us uh, from the reality and cases of other teachers in the world. Like in this moment that we're talking about, that the reality is not this, it, it's not just happening here in Guatemala, but also in other countries. So you could come to talk about this and say, oh, yeah, it's nothing. Um, different in other places. So it's the same situation, right? So we could come and, and talk about it and say, yeah, it's something that I am able to, to cope with and, and possibly going to, to make, right? So then, um, yeah, thinking of all the advantages uh, of the virtual education I will, I will bring to, to this commentary and uh, following up with the professional development idea that um, it is, you know, a mindset that we should follow up. And uh, with the pandemic, we were able to, to make it our own, in our own, right? Because we had to look for the ways in which we could uh, go on and, and make it for ourselves. And make it, made us very independent and, um, and made us learn more. And this is a reality we should keep on going with our studies and uh, improving on the aspects that we need to improve. So, yes, and, and how long have you been in this uh, ELT world, dear Celeste, by the way? Oh, well, um, as I mentioned, I have around 15 years of teaching experience. So it is um, something that I've been trying to improve. Every day we are learning, we never stop learning. And um, yeah, 
it's so, something that yeah. I like to keep on going with my studies, my professional development, looking for this. And this is what I tell my students in class as well. Right? I Thank think yes. Thank you so much, Celeste. Mario, back to you. Your final message to uh, pre-service and in-service teachers now? Um, okay, thank you. Um, well, since uh, this is the last opportunity I have to speak uh, again. Oh, you will for... have more opportunities, my dear Mario. Believe it. Okay, well, <laughs> but uh, just in case, thank you again for inviting us, first of all. To your audience, I don't know if it's just the Americas or this hemisphere or it's abroad, I don't know. But uh, to share it is, it is. Uh, a fact that might interest uh, to everyone that is online on, or anyone else viewing this video later on. Uh, usually when we talk about the teacher's impact to society, there is a general consensus uh, in most countries to acknowledge a day for their contribution to society. Um, here in Guatemala, uh, with the introduction uh, last month of Legislative Decree 3, 2022, no, no, uh, it means that uh, not only under the National Teaching Guild, so Magisterio Nacional, that uh, Mercedina was talking about also uh, in the past questions, um, and schools to their teachers employed privately, there is now officially a recognition to the professional humanist educator, which means that now uh, September 17th from this year onwards, after our national holiday, uh, is the national day of this group of professionals. So us, basically. In that sense, um, uh, how does that translate into what we do? Uh, at least from, from the public sector for now, it's uh, considered a day off with salary for all active professional members. And it will be discretionary in the future for the private sector, so school, institutes, universities to grant it. So um, at the beginning, we were talking about what makes a professional. Yeah. Well, a professional is also recognition. So. It can take many forms, yeah? uh, having a day or something or a benefit. But at the end, uh, the message that I, that I wanna come across is uh, the discipline, the uh, mystique that we have in the learning field uh, at the end brings us up to, the, to the root you know, of uh, all professions and all other disciplines. Uh, without the humanities, without those that make other uh, professions possible, then uh, if we don't uh, take that into account, if we don't invest in that area, um, our reality, no matter where we are, uh, will not look, will not have their brightest uh, day or sight. That's true. I agree with you 100%, dear Mario, and believe it, you will be with us in, in, in other events, believe me. And Celeste, Thank you. and also Bye. Jocelyn, and Mercilinda, and Jerena. Next, Jocelyn, your final message to all the, the people who are listening to us and who will be listening to us in the future, because this will be uh, uploaded in our YouTube channel. Thank you, Jaime. Um, one thing that I want to say is that we are needed, teachers are needed. We are the only ones that can change the reality that we are facing as a world right now. And um, as English teachers, we can provide also other skills to our students, to their professional lives. They can improve the way in which they live right now. So it is important to just feel and don't forget about the passion that we have inside and continue growing in this in this path that we have it is kind of hard but i know that we can do it and that we have to continue um, developing professionally and also emotionally emotionally for students that's, that's what i have true. to say <laughs> that's true thank you so much dear dear uh, jocelyn now uh Jerena? 
Okay, thank you. Uh, what I would like to say is that teaching is a, a passion, as you were saying, and um, we have to fight for what we really love. So it's not going to be easy, but uh, at the end, we are the ones who are going to have the 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 what uh, the the result. Let's say it let's say of our effort and as i was saying at the beginning uh we have uh we know a person that maybe doesn't know anything about la the language but when we realize that it's working in a very important company or uh, as a teacher or they are at the university teaching it's something that it it's not necessary the money yeah that's true uh, yeah that's true. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. And finally, last but not least, our uh, Mercilinda, thank you so much for uh, getting these four people and good human beings to be present the, today on a Sunday morning. Your final message, dear Mercilinda. Thank you, Jaime. I, well, I really appreciate and enjoy these meetings, you know, like it has become part of uh, my schedule, like uh, on Sundays, I, I check what are they talking and I try to to at least listen to what teachers um, in Latin America or from the countries that you invited are saying about the teaching English. I really want to encourage uh, in-service teachers to continue their preparation. This is a constant uh, learning process. Uh, you to be a teacher, you you cannot uh, stop your learning. You have to continue uh, learning, attending conferences, at uh, joining um, different communities. It, it doesn't matter if it's an online community or a WhatsApp community. The thing is that you will try to find that uh, belonging uh, or uh, space because we know that people say, well, I am this and that group, or I belong to this and that group, but there, there are groups that we can um, belong. And having that sense of belonging to something make us feel like, wow, I'm not alone in this, okay? So uh, participate in training programs, participate in round tables, that is something that I really would like that uh, in-service teachers, young teachers, or even us that are very experienced teachers continue to do. Never stop learning. I really would like to encourage people to continue their learning process. You know, like uh, you say that, uh, what do we recommend? Well, this is what we recommend, okay? So uh, here in Guatemala, for example, the only um event that we have annually is with the binational that they have the um uh, the uh, national teachers conference the national teachers conference and this the uh, mtc and these years have it's for free so i say come on try to because in the past the and the excuse was that they want that they have to pay, but now it's for free. So at least you have to attend those and try to get as as much uh, from it because you know, like people say no because it's like for the editorials and it's a it's a lot of uh, advertising or publicity of their books. So, but in the end, try to get the good things and forget about the the selling part. You, we attend those things, okay? So you have the sense of belonging to a group and a very selected group that we are as English teachers. Yes. Well, uh, before uh, closing up, Ever from Peru, he wrote in Facebook Live, I think that if someone uh, wants to be a teacher, what you, need to, what you need is to be a servant to help others. Knowledge can be gotten by studying hard, but the capacity to serve others must be born from your heart. Carlos Camacho from Guatemala, he says, thanks to each one, it's really interesting to see the reality how English is being taught. It was fantastic that you all can share your experience with us. 
Ramos Tolentino from Mexico. It was very interesting to listen to you all. Congratulations. Well, Jaime, thanks a lot for giving me the chance to learn from Guatemala teachers. Have a great Sunday. And I want to thank all of you, uh, my dear friends, Mario, Mercilinda, Cristal, Jerena, Jocelyn, and Celeste for, first of all, for your time, number two, for your generosity, generosity, and number three, for everything that you have said that is going to inspire other teachers. Believe it, believe it, Mario. As you say, this is the last time. No, no, no. <laughs> it started in April. This conference, these webinars started in April 2020. Look, and now we are September 2022. <laughs> and we have had like nearly 90 uh, webinars. And, and I didn't think about it, but it wouldn't be possible uh, if, we, if I didn't know people like Mercilinda and you four. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you. Ah, Carlos Camacho is from, ah, Carlos Camacho is from Peru. Uh, I thought he was from Guatemala. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you next Sunday with our good friends from Mexico to see and learn what they are doing in Mexico. Okay, thank you so much, dear Mario, Mercilinda, Cristal, uh, Jerena, Jocelyn, Celeste, and all the people who are present here. See you. I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.